This is a super quick wet map tutorial. I'm Kev Ryan and here we go. So here's a fairly simple splash simulation where we just have some flip fluid splashing onto a pig's head. And what we want to do now is create a wet map. So what we do first is we create a geometry node and rename that pig head wet map. Dive in and create two object merges. And on the one side, we're going to bring in our pig head. And the other side, we're going to bring in our flip fluid. Now we're going to drop down a color node. Connect that to the pig head and make it black. And then do the same on the flip fluid, but make it red. And then we want to do an attribute transfer. And connect these up like so. And then what we want to do is set this to CD, which is our color. And drop the distance threshold to something very low, like, I don't know, 0 0.05. You can play with this yourself. You can see now that it's actually transferring the color of the fluid onto the surface. The only problem now is that the color isn't sticking around. So to accumulate this data over time, we need to use something called a solver, which, among other things, lets us take in data from our previous frame and work on it on our current frame. So what we do is we connect our pig head to the first input and the flip fluid to the second. And we're going to take this attribute transfer as well. So we dive in, paste that down, connect the previous frame to the first input. And then on the second input, we use input two here, which corresponds to this second input here. Also, it's good practice putting an output node into these things. This ensures that this is the very last thing that's being output from the node. And if we do that and set our display flags and press play, you'll see now that our color is sticking to the object. So that's a very simple wet map. But what we can do is we can actually fade this away over time using a point wrangle. So connect the point wrangle here. Just simply write at cd.x multiply equals, I don't know, 0.95. And now if we play it back, you'll see that the color begins to fade, almost like it's drying out. And that's the very basic form of a wet map. Now, if you want to add further complexity, we could throw in another color here, maybe 0.25. So that way, now we have two channels on this color vector. And if we run this again, you'll see that it kind of looks like it's drying green. And now that we have these two channels, we can create another point wrangle, connect it up after our solver, and then say something like at wet equals cd.x plus cd dot y. And then just to visualize this at cd equals at wet. There we go. Splashes on and then leaves this damp color behind. And what's cool is that because this uh, cd dot y is a separate channel and isn't fading away, we could put some brackets around this and then multiply this by our own channel input just chf brackets and quotes and call this dampness. And then we just click this over here, which creates spare parameters called dampness. And we can turn this up and turn this down as we like. And now that you have this map, you can do any number of things with it. You could use it to say, darken the colors of the diffuse texture to make it look a bit damper or increase the reflectivity. Or you could really go nuts. Alright, thanks very much for watching. Have a good one. Bye.